What does this mean for a state quite reliant on the oil industry itself? Well, Louisiana State Treasurer John Kennedy has been one of those who's been urging the administration to rescind the drilling moratorium. He joins me now from Baton Rouge. Uh, always good having you on the show, sir. Uh, t Megan Hughes was just laying out for us what's underway in Washington right now with the commission. If the moratorium is lifted before the end of November, what does that mean for the workers in your state? Well, it means they can go back to work. Well, how significant uh, is know, it if you're concerned about these job losses and the drag on the economy? Does a few weeks' time truly make a difference? Well, it, it will make a significant difference if they, uh, they lift this moratorium. Look, what's the biggest problem facing our country today? It's jobs. We don't have any, and it's not just in Louisiana. It's in other parts of the country as well. Uh, this moratorium, depending upon whose numbers you believe, is going to cost between 23,000 and 37,000 good jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going backwards here. Well, you talk about some of the numbers out there, so let's talk about the ones from your own state, from Louisiana. The state mm -hmm. issued a forecast in June saying that 10,000 jobs would be lost within a few months of the moratorium. It's been four months. Have you seen mm -hmm. 10,000 jobs lost? Well, look at the numbers. Uh, our July numbers were down 21% in terms of total revenues from the year before. Uh, month to month, on an annualized basis, a rolling average, we're down 18% overall, 26% down personal income tax, 26% down corporation income and franchise tax, 13% mm -hmm. down sales taxes. So now that's not all the moratorium, but a lot of it is. Right. I mean, you've got GM plants, uh, you know, being shuttered. You've got issues with Northrop Grumman we were just talking about today um, and loss of jobs in your state. But specific to the moratorium, are those forecasts of 10,000 jobs lost uh, in this four month period of time, are those forecasts accurate? Better? Worse? In my, ju in my, ju in my judgment, they are. And, and it will only get worse if this moratorium is not lifted. And look, let's face the facts here. Um, this catastrophe, this is not a systemic failure. We've drilled 42,000 wells in the Gulf. We had a catastrophe with one. That's not a systemic failure. Number two, at the end of the day, I think the investigators will find that the main reason for this catastrophe was not that we didn't have enough rules. Mm -hmm. It was that we didn't follow the rules that we had. And some of the people making the decisions on the Macondo well were, were, were acting like chuckleheads. And, and that was the problem. It was human error. It wasn't a systemic failure. Um, before the break, you were talking about, in your view, uh, what happened with the Macondo well and the explosion in the Gulf of Mexico. You say it wasn't a systemic issue. It was a specific one to that rig, to that well. With that in mind, take that argument forward for me. BP owns 65 percent of the well. Are you going to be pursuing more as a state against Anadarko, Transocean, the other uh, people involved, the other companies involved in that well? Well, we expect everyone responsible for this catastrophe to, uh, to, to either compensate us adequately, we don't want a gift, we just want to be compensated for our damages, or we will prosecute our rights to the full extent of the law. Now that includes BP and anyone else responsible for this catastrophe. And it was a catastrophe, Margaret. But it was one out of 42,000, which does not represent a systemic failure of the system. Um, Mr. Treasurer, I want to ask you, because when, when we look at trying to put a, a figure or a ballpark on how much impact this has had, it is truly challenging. I know you've seen a report out in New York Times today uh, talking about government estimates being far too pessimistic as to the impact uh, of the oil spill on the Gulf of Mexico. Um, only two of 33 deep water rigs operating in the Gulf before the explosion has have actually left, have stopped doing business there. How many rigs have you seen? Two. Just but the two. Just the two there, have ceased doing that, business in Louisiana. But, but that doesn't mean there won't be more if this moratorium goes on. And once these rigs leave, they will sign two to three year contracts with other entities in other countries and they won't be able to just turn on a dime and come back. Mm -hmm. I think most members of the industry, industry in the Outer Continental Shelf have adopted a wait and see attitude and they're waiting. But they can't wait forever, and they won't, and that's why it's important that this moratorium be lifted now. Look, let them inspect the rigs. But once, once the federal government inspects a rig and approves it, allow that rig to start drilling. We need to do this on a rig-by-rig -rig basis.
Now, when you talked about tax receipts and the like really having an impact, that gets us to what people are actually taking home, the victims of this bill. Uh, in a neighboring state of Alabama, the attorney general there using very strong words when talking about uh, Ken Feinberg, who's, who's dispensing that money, essentially, um, calling him a corporate shill of BP. Do you agree with that assessment? I don't, I don't uh, have an opinion on that right now because we don't have the facts, Margaret. Uh, I take Mr. Feinberg at his word that he would like to compensate everyone fairly and rapidly, uh, and I hope he does that. I, I think it was a mistake to make everybody fill out their forms again. I don't know why we couldn't just take the paperwork that our people filled out with BP and transfer it to the federal government. That was a mistake. But, but, uh, but, but I expect uh, Mr. Feinberg to keep his word. I hope he will. If he doesn't, we'll have a response. But I don't want to prejudge the situation. All right. Well, we will uh, stay tuned and, and look forward to an update. I appreciate you joining us uh, this morning, Mr. Treasurer.